I'm here with James, the project manager of this Airstream Globe Trotter. It's brand new. Um, what does the customer want on this thing? Uh, they want it all. They want uh, to get enough solar to keep their batteries charged. Um, they want enough batteries to be able to be off grid and power their fridge. Uh, maybe run the air conditioner for a little bit. Um, and just be able to watch TV, keep everything charged and have a good time. So the customer brought this rig in last Friday. What are some of the first things we do when a customer drops off a rig? Um, one of the first things we do is uh, we check the rig that they're towing this with, um, check the seven pin, see uh, uh, if they need any sort of alternator or charging um, or alternator protection rather. To keep current from flowing from the house battery bank in the trailer back to their tow vehicle battery. Yep. Okay, so it's not a drain on it. Gotcha. For sure. Um, after that, we find out where they want their monitors, where they're hooking up their system built, um, and just if there's any little nuances they want to make sure that we incorporate or don't. Tell me about some of the equipment that's going to go in here to accomplish this customer's needs. So we have their Multi Plus 2, uh, Victron's newest. 12 volt, 3000 inverter. And we're using a Multi Plus 2 rather than an original Multi Plus because this particular Airstream has a 50 amp AC panel. Yep. So their shore power cord has four prongs, not three. That's an easy way to tell if you're not familiar. All right, what are some of the other things? Um, we have two easy starts. And um, so, because that's because there's two air conditioners. Yep. And these make it so this can power the air conditioner. Correct. Okay. Um, we also have their Serbo and Touch 50. That's gonna be nice. That gives some internet connectivity and complete system monitoring. Um, there's their DC to DC charging, like we talked about earlier. For the seven pin hookup mm -hmm. for the tow vehicle so we don't have backflow. All right. Okay. Um, and then we have our MPBT. That is a beefy charge controller. What kind of solar array, array are we gonna put on this thing? We are getting... <laughs> a lot. Well, we'll show that in future video segments. Now we are in the Airstream. James, why did you take that apart? What's going on here? Um, two different things. First um, is we're putting in their watchdog, their surge guard um, for inline protection. Um, secondly, we already have the batteries disassembled to bring all of the power in. Um, so there's no power to give our lights anything in here. So we are using this Victron Blue Smart Charger um, to trick our panel into thinking there's a battery. Right on. Why did you take those cabinet doors off? Uh, one of the first things we do is um, find where to put our combiner box up top, pop a hole and route our cable through. In these Airstreams, we have this nice little pocket here that we can hide our loom behind. Smooth. So it looks like the system is getting installed under the bed. Is that something we do on every Airstream? We do it a lot, but not on every Airstream. Some Airstreams, the bed is in the back um, and up here is some table and benches. Uh, in those cases, it'll go under the bench. Um, we think about um, what's gonna be the most convenient for cable routing to save um, voltage drop, and um, just make it most accessible. So uh, less cable, less copper, less expensive. Yep. Uh, how does this impact tongue weight and drivability of the trailer? Um, it's definitely preferred to have our system towards the tongue as much as possible um, to keep that weight um, up towards the tongue instead of in the rear to stop uh, any excessive sway. Okay, um, where do you think components are going to be going in here? And here, um, we're going to try to get our batteries along this back wall. Uh, this system is getting two 200 amp uh, life blue batteries, and we're prepping it for a third. So they, they'll start off with two, but be able to add a third easily if they decide two isn't quite enough. Yep. Right on. Um, so we're going to keep those all flat along the back, build our system on one side so that we can put a wall in, conserving as much storage space as possible. Okay, thank you. Day two for the Airstream project, and we have the roof combiner box mounted, and looks like we're getting ready to install solar panels, cleaning the roof. Asa is lining out his game plan for 
couple of Zamp 100 watt Obsidian solar panels. We have six Zamp Obsidian panels now stuck to the roof. Uh, we have yet to apply the ceiling to the mount feet. We're using AM Solar stabilized obsidian rocker feet, so you've got the feet that rotate here and a stabilizer bar down this way that allows you to tilt the panels. Um, this should be finished off by the end of the day with the sealant. All right, James, the moment of truth is here. Uh, we're at the final stages of just clean up and programming for this beautiful system. Uh, tell us about some of the features starting at the roof. What do we have going on up there? So on the roof, we have 600 watts of Zamp Obsidian panels. And the cable for that is routed it's in a closet? It's closet okay. underneath the rig in the belly pan. And then coming up to this charge controller. Why such a large charge controller for only 600 watts? This customer has some room to expand up on the roof as well as he has integrated um, his portable plug so that he can add more panels um, that way later. All right, and then from the charge controller, it goes to the lithium battery bank. What do we have there? We have 200 amp, or two 200 amp hours of light blue batteries. And this is all under a bed. These batteries don't off gas. They don't put out any substantial heat or make any noises. So he's not gonna have any problem dealing with that. No. And then from the batteries to that big device there. Yep, we have the 12 volt multi plus two. Uh, powers both legs of his 50 amp um, panel. And then looks like we have a Serbo GX to no. The touch 50 monitor right here showing status of the system and batteries are at 98 they're about topped off it's bright sun it's super hot today looks like we're getting 385 watts because it's uh probably about full right now um and then explain these breakers and switches here why would someone need to deal with those so there's we got various reasons as to why we would need these. We, uh, we have a solar breaker and a breaker for his DC to DC Victron Orion. Um, those are protection um, in case a surge or anything, those will shut themselves off. Um, and then we have on off switches for our solar. So our this is between the charge controller and the battery bank. This one is between the solar array and the charge controller. Reverse. Solar array. Oh, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> solar array and charge controller. Charge controller and batteries. That's why we have James do this. <laughs> we have an inverter on off. It just cuts the inverter out. Mm -hmm. And then a master on off that will shut everything off. Awesome. Nice work.